Let's talk about that inflation story. We did see a little bit of a moderation in the US numbers overnight. You heard there from Bob Kaplan saying he'd be in favour of tapering uh, to commence at the September meeting. How do you uh, weigh up all of this? Well, the, the two things existing at the same time, because we all concentrate on the CPI figures, but I would imagine that from the Fed's point of view, what happens in the lab labor market is quite an important one. We saw last Friday with the jobs reports that the labor market is very strong, very active. And since then we had two reports, the jobs report and then the NFIB survey indicating the same. Job demand is very strong, running at about 10 million people demand. Then on the offer side, you have more difficulties in getting there. And if you listen to the companies, especially yesterday, what we had with the NFIB survey, companies' message is the same. They have difficulties in filling the vacancies that they have. They have to eventually rise the, um, the, 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 the amount of what they pay to the people, so the, the labor. And at the same time, they have difficulties in getting the goods that they need. So I would imagine that from the Fed's point of view, it's not just the CPI figures, but also what happens in the labor market that do determine their actions. And given what the companies are telling you, the difficulties that they have in getting the people they need on the reopening, I would, I would imagine that also dictates part of the Fed's decision, which has indicated for quite some time that the labor market was becoming a key indicator in the policy framework. Yeah, the labour market's certainly uh, tight. You're, though, underweight government bonds. Explain that a part of your investment strategy for us. Yes. We are underweight government bonds because we think the risk reward is less interesting. Because if we go along with the recovery that we have seen, and remember the recovery is very strong, continues to unfold, we have the manufacturing sector already improving, then you have the service sector starting to move up uh, as well. And we know the direction and the pace is a very strong one. Remember that we have economic numbers, which we haven't never seen a generation. We're getting out of a recession with a very special issue, which is people have more money on the way out than on the way in, thanks to all the supports that the governments have given to households and to companies. So in that framework, it's difficult to imagine that rates will stay where they are, just if you are consistent with the level of nominal growth rate that you should be having in 2021, which is around 9%, then rates at 1.3% are quite low against that. So we would imagine that together, as the market realizes that the economy is strong, pricing pressure remains, even if it has remained slightly lower uh, in, the recent, in the recent data, but also going together with the Fed's intention to taper, then the risk reward for government bonds is not interesting. Okay, well, where is the risk uh, reward then? Because I note that you also are maintaining a neutral stance on equities. Yes. It's probably within the equity space that you want to take your bets. And one of the features that we have seen first in the first quarter and then in the second quarter of this year is the ability of some companies, but not everyone, to pass all the rising input prices to their customers. Companies are facing two issues today. One is on the supply side of goods. It's difficult today to get the parts you need to be able to produce, even the disruptions that we have on the global supply chains. This is one. And what we have seen recently with the pandemic cases rising in Asia makes the work even more difficult because some factories are closing down. Second, the other difficulty is to get the people in so that you are able to produce at the pace that you need to produce for your clients. Now, in this environment, if you're a second tier supplier, life is difficult for you because you don't have the pricing power that you need. Meanwhile, if you're a large established company, if you already have a strong technological content or innovation or strong brand name, you are able to pass on these rising input prices to your customers. So within the equity space, what we look for is those companies who have this ability, who have the strong pricing power, and who have demonstrated in the last two quarters that they were able to keep their margin intact by raising the prices to their customers and to compensate for the rising in their input prices.